Hi, everyone. We are here with uh, Stefan Johansson, uh, who has been working as an RTL designer for ASIC and FPGAs throughout his whole career. Uh, he first spent four years at Freescale, and then he joined uh, uh, ENU in uh, 2010. And then ENU got acquired by Keysight, where, where he is now. And uh, um, so since then, he has been working on uh, uh, on FPGAs and, and system architectures for packet processing, specifically in network packet brokers. So in this context today, he's gonna present as a work on how to deduplicate packets collected by a packet broker using P4. So please, Stefan, go ahead. Thank you. So I'm gonna talk about how to do packet deduplication in a um, pipeline switch architecture like a Tofino uh, using P4. So a network packet broker receives traffic from a live network and sends that traffic to a number of network monitoring tools. And because you have multiple tap points in the network, uh, the packet broker often receives multiple copies of the same packet. And removing these duplicates will reduce the load on the tools and make the tools uh, perform better. So, how do we detect duplicate packets? Well, we calculate a signature for every packet, and then we store these signatures in a, a sliding window that needs to be large enough to accommodate the delay between the duplicates. So then obviously for every packet, we have to do a lookup in our table, and also we have to update the table. We have to add a new, a new signature and remove an old one to prevent the table from filling up. And, um, doing updates this fast, you have to do them from the user plane. Um, involving the control plane software would be too slow for this. So <clears throat> stateful RAMs, registers, um, can be used to implement a hash table. And we want to have multiple columns in our hash table to reduce the effects of hash collisions. And typically in the pipeline, you can do one memory access per stage so to solve that, we put each column in its own stage in the pipeline. And the sliding window is achieved by shifting the whole table um, for one row when you're adding a new entry and thereby shifting the last column out and removing it from the table. So here's an example of a hash table with four separate columns. A packet comes in with a new signature. We need to add it to the table we push it into the first column and shift all the columns towards the end. And then the last value, the value in the last column gets shifted out and removed from the table. So the operations for each of the stages is as follows. Um, we have a value in the table already. We get the value coming in from the previous stage, in this case, 85. And we also have the signature for the current packet. We we'll put 85 into the table and fetch the value from the table. And then we compare the new value to the signature of the packet. And if there's a match, we mark the packet for drop. And then the value that we fetch from the table gets moved forward in the pipeline to the next stage. So the P4 code for this is, consists of two parts. There's the code for updating the table. Basically, you take the input and put it in table and you take the value from the table and return that as the output. And then the processing for each stage is first you do the table updates, and then you do the compare. You compare the value you fetch from the table with the current signature of the packet. And if there's a match, you mark the packet for drop. And here's some simulation results done with a hash table of 64,000 rows and four columns. So if the delay between the duplicates is 40,000 packets, this will remove about 99% of all duplicates. And of course, if the delay grows, then the performance will go down. So at about 80,000 packet delay, then we only remove about 95% of duplicates. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, this is, was, uh, I mean, it was short as it was supposed to be, but, but very clear and, and very interesting. Okay, um, thank you. So um, I have a couple of questions. So you said this is uh, for an architecture like Tofino. It's, um, 
this has nothing to do with FPGAs or? Um, uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, we do have this functionality in our current products and we do use FPGAs to implement packet deduplication. Um, however, it's done slightly different. We still do have a hash table, um, but um, you now implementing a hash table in a pipeline switch architecture is a little bit different from using a hash table in, let's say, an external memory. Um, the way you access it and you know, the way you want to, uh, how you handle removing old entries and so on. So. Yeah, no, I got it. And how do you um, calculate the, the hash? Uh, do you <laughs> use some standard uh, way or would one need a specific external to do that? I mean, by standard way, I mean something that's commonly available on a switch. Um, well, so in our FPGA implementations, obviously we have a, you know, implement our own hash calculators that takes into account um, the whole packet, the whole packet payload, uh, which is ideal. Uh, you can ignore some of the headers if you want to. Um, in a switch like Tofino, there are a number of hash calculators that you can use and feed in any, um, any values you want to, um, but there are some limitations. You can obviously not calculate the hash over the whole payload like we do in the FPGA, and that's, that's a limitation. Um, so you would have to find um, some pieces you can pull out from the parser in the beginning that you can use to feed into your um, hash. For example, you can use things like header checksums and uh, the IPv4 ID fields or TCP checksums and sequence numbers and so on, so that you can guarantee that all the packets um, that are unique will have a different hash value. And is that what you did in the as a results that you showed? I mean, I understand that that's a emulation, but uh, yes, in my uh, simulation, in my example implementation, that's that's what I did. I pull out some fields from the IP header and so on to calculate the hash to get unique hashes. Very good. And look, Stefan, uh, I think this is this was a very interesting. I would have a, a general question that is a little bit beyond this this talk, but I think it could be interesting for our audience. Um, you know, often in the context of before, we say, oh, before uh, is, uh, um, is an easier, let me say, to simplify, better way to program hardware than the, the way we would do it with, uh, for example, FPGAs traditionally, like with, uh, um, you know, Verilog or, or whatever um, tools you use. So since you have this long experience with uh, with FPGAs and, and, and also with before. Uh, can you tell us a little bit what you think about this? I mean, maybe if, if you agree that programming with before makes things easier, can you give us a couple of examples of, 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 uh, um, of, of ways in which before make things easier? Uh, yes, I, I, I mean, as long as you're doing something that can be done in P4 and fits the current switch architecture, you know, then then is definitely easier. Uh, for sure, it took me it took me less time to code up um, deduplication in this example than it would have done um, writing it in RTL because in RTL you had to implement every little piece uh, from from ground up unless you have a huge library already of blocks you can use, uh, like you know calculating the hash, we have to implement our own functionality in RTL, but here you have hash calculators. Doing a table lookup is automatic. You don't have to write some kind of memory interface logic. And the parser is just, you know, do you define the different stages in RTL, you would have to implement your own packet parser. So from that point of view, it's definitely easier. Uh, now this, Deduplication, of course, is an example of things that are kind of pushing the limits of what the switch and P4 is meant to do. So you have to really think hard to, um, you know, come up with something that will actually fit with the blocks you have. You know, in FPGA, you can always change it, implement something that you need, but here you're limited to whatever resources the pipeline stage provides. You have 
You have tables, you have hash calculators, you have some simple arithmetic you can do in every stage and, and that's it. So yeah. yes, it is easier as long as you, um, you know, have a, a problem that follows the, it fits into the, the framework they intended for. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's probably exactly the key point. Uh, how how wide of a scope can we cover with with what we have in P four? Right. Yeah, Stefan, thank you very very much. This was uh, very interesting, and uh, um, yeah, it was it was great to have you here. All right, thank you. <clears throat>